Hello, welcome to another episode of my podcast. My name's Peter Baisley. Peter, Peter Baisley. Sometimes I sort of talk like that. Oh man, why have I got no real identity? I don't even know who I am. Anyway, let's not get into that. Let's start the podcast. It's um, This one is the first ever triple way podcast. I've got two people on this podcast. Let me just explain who they are. John Mia. Meager, I can't, still can't pronounce his name. Uh, I do like the guy, but I can't pronounce his name. He is a, a stand-up comedian, and then the other one is a stand-up comedian as well. I mean, who, who even wants to listen to stand-up comedians? They are, are they interesting? I don't think so. But they're the only people I know. So Ed Knight is also on it. He's a young guy. Oh, this is the worst. Anyway. So, uh, Pete, who are your favourite acts? Uh, I like Ed Day, Ed Knight, John Mia. <laughs> you literally just Ed, got let's talk about you. Ch- <laughs> Come on, Ed. <laughs> let's talk about you changing your name because. Are you trying to hide all this info about yourself? You're trying to come across as, as the one thing, but the truth is, you're quite the other. And it's day and night. Yeah. You've changed your name, haven't you? I had to change my name for... Uh, there is basically a um, two organisations called Equity and Spotlight. I'm not a member of Equity. It's like a union for performers. A lot of people, you don't really have to... You used to have to be in it back yes. in the day. As well, a lot of people had to change their names. Yeah. But... Um, I am in Spotlight, which is like yellow pages for actors, for finding actors. Yeah. And they follow the same rules as equity. Unfortunately, there was already an, an Edwards Day, which is my, my born name, my given name, mm-hmm. in there. So I couldn't be the same. And I've ha- been operating under two different names for acting and stand-up for the past year. Um, but I thought, you know, I should stop that. Because what am I going to do? I have two Twitters. Who does, um, mm. or does that Spotlight work? Like, do you get work from it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty much like if you are an actor, it's pretty much you have to have one, I think. So you change your name to Ed Knight. Yeah, it's like if, if a like you know, God willing a casting director wanted to see me, they would go into Spotlight and have a look at my like my CVs on there and stuff. And, and was it weird the first time you gigged with under the new name Ed Knight? Yeah, I got the 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 first gig I did was uh convert by a mate of mine. And I was like, I don't know if you know, I'll ch- I'll change my name. So if you could bring me on as Ed Knight, and so yeah, he did. And she got really confused when he brought me on. <laughs> you <laughs> got... I forgot. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. Oh, um, cheers, mate. Ed actually told me that story earlier, so I thought I'd bring that back in. But mm. no one will notice. That was very natural the way you did that. Oh, thanks, mate. Good work, John. <laughs> 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 John, my name, name is, is, yeah, yeah. My John, you haven't changed your name. I've not changed How do you feel that's affected your career? <laughs> oh, definitely. You know what? It, throw, it throws compares or MCs when they look at the page mm. and they freak out when they see my name, which is spelled yeah. M-E-A-G-H-E-R. Weird. And they're like, what the fuck? But they, the, I don't care. Like, I don't care when someone mispronounces my name. I don't okay. care. Yeah. But they get so caught up and fucking going to say it wrong, going to say it wrong, that it, it's always a shit intro. <laughs> it's just, just... Yeah. It is scary stuff. Ed, can you stop yawning on the podcast, please? Okay. Oh, my gosh. You're a li- little, little child. Mm-hmm. You're a little, little child. Bear. Okay. Sure. Here's a question, guys. Who's the first comedian you remember seeing as a child or experiencing? Laurel and Hardy. Laurel and Hardy. Yeah, easily. When I was a kid, I used to watch Laurel and Hardy videos with my dad and my granddad. Okay. So that's the first comedy I can ever remember seeing. That's great. You sound much better when you're at that point there. Here. Yeah, okay. so maybe say, here. say it again. Laurel and Hardy. Great. And? <laughs> <laughs> uh, mine, like the big one for my childhood was probably Billy Connolly or Dave yeah. Allen. Oh, I love Dave Allen. Yeah. yeah. I watched him as a kid as well. So very storytelling. Yeah, it makes sense as well. Music, or musical Police voice. Academy. <laughs> <laughs> Police Academy, yeah. Uh, that would explain the sound effects. You know, <laughs> right, right. I went to see him, uh, Michael Winslow, a few years oh, really? back. It's fun. He's unbelievable. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Yeah. A lot of my friends were fucking stoned off their face. One of the boys said he thought he was at like a Pink Floyd concert. <laughs> it was fucking mad. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, he's... Um, Dave Allen is the one I can remember from Charlie. His tell and time... Of course, is yeah. for me the most perfect bit of all time. Yeah, 
he's um can you can you do it now (laughs) (laughs) no but you can put a link one of the most important things we as parents do is we teach our children about time we teach them important things like reading the clock you actually think that's important I'm going to teach you to read the clock. Hmm? I'm going to teach you to read the time. Why? Why? Because it's important that you know the time. Why? Because how would you know when to get up to go to school? M- mummy would make me. <laughs> what if mummy wasn't there? You, you'd wake me. What if we both weren't there? Wouldn't go to school. How would you know when breakfast was? I'd be hungry. Shut up! <laughs> Where does think? Dave Allen fit into the troubles? Uh, yeah. <laughs> he didn't give a fuck, yeah. which is the best part of it. Like, yeah. So it's a lot of, lot of uh, carry-on stuff. Okay, I used to listen to Round the Horn. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, in the car. To that, yeah. no, actually, tell you what, I used to... Uh, my grandparents, one, sort of my my mum's parents live in Birmingham, so when, we, when I was a kid, we used to drive up there quite a lot. My, my favourite thing part of the whole trip was stopping at Oxford Services and looking at the comedy CDs because this is like the late 90s yeah they used to used to put a lot of stuff yeah, out on and CD and tape I used they? to listen to Jasper Carrot Jasper Carrot when yes. I was a kid Jasper Me Carrot too. one was my favourite but then I found uh, like a DVD of him from the 70s and it was a bit like, like this is like last year I was like oh brilliant I haven't seen him in ages and it was a bit racist so yeah, yeah upset yeah. me oh yeah. did it upset you yeah I was like yeah. Well, no, it wasn't like, oh, f- thank fuck. He wasn't being racist <laughs> enough when I was six year old. Did you ever watch Bill, Bill Cosby stuff? Bill Cosby was, you know... I call a, him... A year, year or two ago, he would have been, you know, he was hailed as the yeah. the man. Mm. Just it's, untouchable. It's so interesting, though, isn't it? Like, we're now you're like, fuck. Like, that still exists, but mm. it doesn't exist in a vacuum. So, it's, like, can... Mm. I, like it's, I I think it's really weird. Woody Allen's another one. But yeah, well, it's like he's such a fucking creep. But at the same time, it, I, it's the weird. Uh, possibly the only thing I took away. Well, not the only thing, but in uh, I did. I actually did philosophy A level, guys. Don't know if you know. We did. We learned a bit about philosophy of art. Something really interesting was uh, judging the art separately from the artist. Yeah, from the artist. So that's the excuse. Like people still listen to the. Ring cycle, even though Wagner was like a massive anti. Wait, sorry, talk me through. Talk me through this. I'm an idiot. Talk me so, through like, this. you got to, even if you know you can still appreciate Woody Allen's art, even if he is like a sexual bit deviant. Of a nonce. Yeah, a bit of an okay. incest nonce. <laughs> yeah. What What was the other thing you said? Philosophy or something? Is the it's just a like a philosophy of art that you got. to separate the art from the artist yeah so Michael Jackson Michael Jackson's like yeah. a good one like um, brilliant dancer and recently Af- Africa Bambata as well if you want oh. to hear that one. he's been accused of of uh, okay well we don't have to go into it but um, a chain paedophile right yeah, okay that's not the ideal the nation have kicked him out of, as deposed oh he's leader. kicked out of the nation and R. Kelly is R. Is R. Kelly not in Zulu Nation or, no <laughs> no he's been done what I think he's been arrested seven or eight times for... But that sort of goes with the whole stuff. urban sex. urban stuff. Wow. That's fine if you're urban. What? An urban <laughs> act. <laughs> no, hang on. Wait, no, I feel no. like you maybe back, didn't back hear what I said. slightly a R. little Kelly. bit. R. Kelly has been arrested seven or eight times for underage sex what offenses. Do you, what do you mean by urban? It's fine, he's urban. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by urban? I don't know. It's something John Long once told me. So... Uh, <laughs> hey, you listen to the hate we talk. Hey, you listen, hey, listen to the hate, 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 hate talk. Hey, what's the worst gig you've ever done? This. <laughs> I'm joking. No, I, like, probably the one I spoke about earlier. The one where I did a straw poll of the audience and asked who... Yeah. Yeah. Ambivalence is much worse than people reacting badly. Yeah, reacting badly or people chatting is fine. But when people are giving you all of their attention and just staring at you in silence, that's the worst one. A gig that I think about a lot and shudder is actually a gig that I was doing really well on. Yeah. And, um, at the stand in Glasgow, and oh, I wow. wanted to do it for ages. And I fucking did. I was doing 10 minutes, and 9 minutes 55 was fucking like. It was going really well, and then uh, I fucked up the last joke. Fucked up, I said the wrong name for a local thing, 
and just fucking went dead. And I still think about that in the back of my head. That's the fucking worst. Like, worst. I had one of those recently. It was a Saturday night. I turned up to the the place, which was in like a quite a popular chain of pubs. There were two guys outside the pub. It was quite early for the gig, drinking. And one of them, they were pointing at people passing and going, eh, your ankles are following you. Your ankles are following you. What does that mean? Uh, exactly. And they did it to me and started laughing and we had a nice joke. And then it turns out they were in the front row. Nice. And they would uh, they were with, they were sort of grew about five or six of them all absolutely smashed, come on a night out from Wales or something. And they kept talking for the whole. I was on the first section. They were like, the combo was doing a very, very good job of shutting them up. But they kept chatting. And they'd been all right for my set and it was going okay. But my, my closer was like, 40 seconds of solemn build up and talking myself out of something but before a big punchline and during the build up where there's no laughs they started chatting and I could see people in the audience losing attention from me and going on to them so I tried to get onto it quick and just as I was about to say the final big punchline the bloke in the crowd shouted and I was like well you fucking shout all over that didn't you I basically just shouted at him for two minutes no jokes and walked off the stage and it was really bad I shouldn't have done it but they they, yeah, ended, no, they, ended up, them. they ended up getting kicked out after I came off stage but it was just like it ruins it for the other people in the crowd the 90% of the audience that actually didn't want to pay attention or pay to come and see comedy yeah yeah. what would you have done differently if you could go back to that moment I would have kicked him in the head really no okay I threatened a guy once and it got very fucking weird. Yeah. Okay, you were on stage? At home, yeah. Oh, yeah. At home we were in like, it was this, I think it was like a youth club and um, it was fucking, it was awful. But they, it was a, it was going, it was going all right. The game was, was quite nice but in the back of the room was a pool table and these guys got up and probably had a little let's ruin the fucking comedians and started playing pool. Yeah. And the guys that were on before me are all quite nice and genteel and just didn't say anything and yeah. were just like, trying to get through it it was really awkward and then whenever I went up one of them took a shot and it was so stupid like and I just fucking got so angry and I was like man I'm not being funny but if you don't put that fucking pool cue down I'm going to wrap it around your neck and Eesh. and it was like and that's like I wasn't joking at all and and it was the <coughs> weirdest gig then <laughs> I remember coming off going well I know <laughs> to never do that again <laughs> I did a gig in uh, Edinburgh Last year, at like 2 o'clock in the morning, there were four audience members, lads my age in the front row. And it was really weird. Um, it's not really a gig, is it? No, no. But one of them, like, it was a gig for sort of... That's a gig. Edinburgh, yeah. But then one of them had an eyebrow shaved off. Turns out he'd fallen asleep at a party and the others had done it to him. And I was there with a, a mate who's a very, very good comic. But he, he has quite a closed-off personality on stage. Um, he's a very, very good comic. But it's quite a... Or it was then, at least, a high level of conceit. So it didn't break persona quite a lot to talk to the audience um, but he decided he was going to do it on this occasion ended up just shouting at the boy that shaved the eyebrow telling him he was going to sh- come around to his house and shit in his mouth and I was the only person I was on the floor I was screaming laughing and the organisers of the gig were going like what's he doing all the boys just looked really worried and scared and he was like I'm going to shit in your fucking mouth and I was on the floor why was, Why did he do that were they just, being... No, 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 they weren't, they weren't saying anything. He just thought he'd try crowd work. He just went to pieces. <laughs> <laughs> he went to pieces. <laughs> yeah. It was really funny. What's your worst gig, Pete? Hey, you listen to the hate card. Hey, you hey, listen, listen to the hate card. Would you guys date a comedian? Which one? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Right. Funny. Um, would you date a female comedian? Yeah. Have you not, uh, never yeah. been? Have you never yeah. been told that's a bad idea? No. Yeah, but people fucking tell you everything's a bad idea. Yeah. Like, so what about Lou Sanders? Do you think I should yeah, date her? Yeah. I think if you want to, then go <laughs> yeah. for it. Well, I mean, as long as she is, a, she is a choice. I don't know if she's got a boyfriend, actually. Problem is, like, obviously, when we date, if we date, um, that would, her, her, um, she's, you know, she, what, how would you feel if you dated someone who and then they propelled your career ahead through that. Does that happen? I think it could happen because it's all about who you know, right? So Ed's face is saying that he knows somebody. No, that's he no to. no no it isn't. But that's I not. would. How would you feel if your if your career got propelled through the woman you were dating and then you had to d- 
deal with that legacy. Well, I feel like you get over it. I mean, I'd probably if you're good enough to sustain it, then (laughs) then 100 percent. Yeah, you're fine. If you're shit and you're getting gigs because of that, then they won't last. I've had uh, there. Talking about nepotism in general, it's like you know, I've had the people who have that sort of connection or who are related to a comic or something in the industry. I've had people slag them off to me, saying that's the only reason they are where they're. They are where they are now. No, but like, and people slag me off for the same thing. But it's like they're the same people. Why? Because you're and, you're related to someone who's a yes, comedian. Yeah, yeah. And my people have said to me that, uh, oh, but I, anyone would use what? It's not about using it. If if I ran a newspaper, and I gave a like a job as an editor to my son, we wouldn't fucking keep him on if he was shit. You know, it's a business. Yeah, there's also if people I wouldn't in... be successful if they weren't good or at least what. There's a lot of people are looking for. I'm all for nepotism. Like, oh, fuck yeah. If I got fuck to a yeah. position where I had enough fucking power and money or whatever to give up, make sure all my family were sound, then oh, gotcha. you'd, be a fucking, you'd be a cock if you're like, don't know how this is going to look. Yeah, do mm. the, here's the job, and if, you, if you're no good at it, then you're fucking sacked. But, mm. of course, like, yeah. is that not just what, is that not is normal? Not? That's weird yeah. if you don't do that. Give your friends jobs. Yeah. It's like, why, like how many times have you given me gigs, Pete? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Like, Tons. Yeah, it's the same. I'm a nice guy. And sort of how many to me? Um, I think twice, one? just so you know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's, one or two? Just so you know, for me, it was twice. But, um, but you know, like, it, it is that. And I, yeah. just, I just think if you're good enough, then you'll, like, that's just your way of getting it. And, yeah. th- like, I've got gigs off the back of knowing people before. And then you just hope, like, if I get asked back, then I've probably done a good job. Yeah. If you don't get ass back, you're like, well, it's the ass back. That's the good bit. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly it. But I, I think it also holds people back. Sometimes, because I've the same as you have heard people say like, oh, but he goes out with fucking mm. thingy, so that's why he's getting gigs. And so, do you think I should go out with Lou Sanders or not? Yeah, if you like her, is it, I don't know her at all, so not saying. That. I've not met her. Okay. Right. So I'm doing like a gig again. Step this step just on. sounds sort of I'm doing a gig. creepy now. I'm doing a gig with her. I mean, I'll send her this. Right. How? Uh, uh, I don't know. Some Facebook. I'll tweet at her. I'll tweet at her. Do it. And then, um, nice. and then we're doing a gig in a few weeks well, together. That's, there you so go, man. Nice. I'll just say, did you listen to the podcast? What read, do you think? Read the game, and then you're fine. The, yeah, my one's Margot out? Robbie. Sorry. Margot Robbie. Who apparently lives near me. So. To fucking, if I ever see her, then I'm 100% gonna try and talk to her. Who? Margot Robbie. Have you seen The Wolf of Wall Street? Yeah. She's yeah. a blonde girl in The Wolf she of Wall Street. She lives near you. Yeah, she lives in Clapham. Oh. Or she did up until about a year ago, at least. But yeah. I think um, oh. I would like <coughs> to be married to. You're listening to young boys talk about their love life, their, uh, their dreams and hopes, I and think love who they want to get married with. Oh. Ed, who? What's the girl that you like? I don't know. Like, pro- come on. Um, who have you got a crush on? I don't, I don't know. You don't want to say. I don't say it. You don't want to say because you're worried it might come true. Uh, There's a famous person. I don't know. I'm oh, trying to think of a famous person. I fancy. That's what I'm trying to do. I've, tr- I've, I've. I've I don't have like a stock one. Okay, <laughs> got loads like, but I, <laughs> I did a gig. I, I did a gig in uh, in fucking Hackney one night, and two of All Saints were at it. And after two of All Saints, yeah, man, I was so into All Saints when I was like fourteen, fifteen. Like, it still isn't no great. They got as bewitched. Now, all of bewitched. That's my one. Hey, listen to the hate cast. The young boys talk about their love life, their oh, their dreams and hopes, right. and love who they want to get married with. We teach them important things. Have you ever killed anything? Anything? Yeah. Only one. Uh, like moths and uh, spiders and stuff. And one... Uh, one... Uh, one uh, sort of bag full of cats. But apart from that... <laughs> Have you actually done that? No, I haven't killed a bag full of cats, no. Wow, this podcast... Yeah. Um, Welcome to Cats Bag Full of Cats podcast. Have you killed a bag full of cats? Have you killed a bag full of cats, John? No. I've killed. Um, oh my gosh. I've killed an endangered, no, a protected species by accident. <laughs> How? I killed an otter and shot it. What? <laughs> was it looking? It was at you coming funny? at me. <laughs> I thought, no, I thought it was a giant rat. Okay. On the farm. 
I was shooting rats because right. I'm a fucking yeah. that's hi mm-hmm. that's I'm John wow. <laughs> <laughs> shoot rats. And, uh, do you shoot rats in like the euphemistic sense as well so like a prison rats what's a what's that like a squealer oh yeah <laughs> I mean, snitches get stitches <laughs> end up in ditches yeah <laughs> um, yeah but no it was at night and I saw this thing moving in the bushes and I was like I'm gonna fucking kill that thing I just had an air rifle and I shot it and um, it, it kept moving I was like right I shot it again I was like fuck you, usually one's enough like and then yeah. it was like two fuck that's a lot and then that's a big rat. like I could still see it rustling <laughs> And then I shot it again, and then I was thinking, fuck, I hope that's not one of my auntie's cats. Like, that's what I was like, yeah. fuck, no. And then I went outside, and it was a fucking otter. And I put it on, put it on the end of a spade and threw it in the sea. <laughs> <laughs> so like, welcome, ladies. Pretended it never so. fucking happened. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, Pete Baisley and... <laughs> Animal killers. <laughs> <laughs> it was gonna, an accident. So what's going to happen now is going to be uh, there's going to be a little otter, like a little girl otter, right? And she's going to te- it's going to be like Leon the professional, and she's going <laughs> to room with an assassin, and then one day you're going to be just like listening to classical music in a New York apartment, and you're going to get shot by a twelve year old otter <laughs> for killing his family. Good chat. Good chat. That's a Good screenplay chat. right there. Well, it already is. Leon the professional. Oh. It's a good film. Great, great, very creepy movie as well. Yeah, it is quite creepy in some bits, yeah. Mm. It's quite creepy. Natalie Portman is fucking really good in it. Yeah. Like for, for a child actor. She's yeah, I thought like, you were going to say hot there. Yeah, I thought like, you were going to say yeah. hot as well. <laughs> your mouth said good, but your eyes said hot. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to uh, Young Actress Podcast Reviews. Who's your favourite young actress, John? In a film. What is that? Recently or mm. ever? She's great. Chloe she's Chloe Moritz in um, Let Me In is great as well. Yeah, yeah. She's she's good in that. And kick ass as well. Yeah, great job. Um, <laughs> Did you just ask that hoping you weren't going to get an answer, Pete? I don't know anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the format of this podcast? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Should we just say that we we recorded about fifty minutes worth of stuff? It's worth mentioning, yeah. Well, not recorded. We spoke for about fifty minutes. We spoke fifty minutes, then realised the memory card was full. Mm. Yeah. So you've you've you missed the good stuff, I'm afraid, listener. Right, it was, no, it was it was it? Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Hello. to the show. You're listening to Peter Baisley, and today I have two young men who are comedians. I have Ed Knight, hang on, and John Meir. Hello. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Maha. Maha. Maher. I Ma- don't know Maher. why. It's just a sound, guys. Maher. 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 Nice one. I, yeah, that's not how I would say it. Um, but I don't want to say Mayer either, because it's not Mayer, is it? And John well, no, Mayer is... No, that implies a yeah. level of coolness that I'm not... He's a musician, yeah. isn't yeah. he? John so, Mayer, yeah. yeah. I don't think he's cool. Brian Taylor Swift, fair play to him. I didn't okay. know that. Yeah, she wrote songs about him and all. Is he, is he, he's not like the ex-boyfriend that she talks about in her songs. Yeah, she is for, or he is for a lot of them, yeah. Are you listening one to Taylor called, Swift chat? One of them's called Dear John. Wow. No, but like, Dear John is just oh, what you say at the top yeah, of Yeah, but it just happened to oh, be so awesome. Like a, there's two meanings. <laughs> wow. <laughs> a song with two meanings. <laughs> you live and learn. Um, guys, I'm going to leave you guys to chat while I go for a toilet break. Right. Okay. So this just introduce yourselves to the listeners, and again. Uh, I'll be back soon. <laughs> yeah. You just introduced us to the listeners. What? You know, talk about what each other looks like and Why stuff. Why is that your thing? Why do you keep getting us to describe <laughs> each other? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did that before as well, and it yeah. was weird that was time. But he's went for it again. Yeah, and now he's, he's actually gone to the top. He could have done that before we started recording. I'm sure. Our head paused, but now it's yeah, it's done now, isn't it? It is done now. How have you been, John? Yeah, pretty yeah. good, man. Pretty good. Yeah, yeah. There's a bit of a uh, bit of change in that bowl there. We could we could stay there. I looked at it earlier. I ate it, it up. I said, it up. I ate it up. Fucking comedy's not going too well. Yeah. <laughs> Peter, yeah. Peter Basley's changed. Jar players, is yeah. looking, um, is looking pretty good. Peter Basley's changed. Jar would be quite a good band name, I think. Our podcast name because yeah. he's fucking going mad looking for one. Yeah, you can't think of a name. What was the one that was someone suggested on Facebook? It was really good. I can't remember, but I mean, Peter Basley 
podcast or Peter Baisley's show or something seems yeah. like I, I think no such thing as a Peter Baisley would be quite good why do you think that because there's one called no such thing as a fish okay yeah okay so what I did there John was a joke but, okay right I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. they just <laughs> fly over my head like so many birds um <laughs> Do you have a podcast? I don't have a podcast. Everyone's got podcasts now. I recorded a few uh, pilots with mates that weren't particularly amazing, and I realised that I, I just uh, spent most of it reading out uh, IMDb user reviews of Avatar. Of Avatar. Yeah, and then I sort of couldn't use them because I accidentally said the real names of the people that wrote them. <laughs> so, but still, who cares? Just fucking put it out. Yeah. Nobody's gonna care. I quite like to do a podcast. You can just do one. I will just do one. I need a microphone. Can I borrow yours? <laughs> yeah. Cool. Should we do it now? Should we just do it now? Well, we're just fucking crazy. take over. Yeah. Guys, welcome welcome to, to the <laughs> Ed Knight and John Maher podcast. I don't know. I think it should be your. I think it should just be the Ed Knight show. Ed Knight show. Um, what, what are we going to talk about? Well, can you describe what I look like? <laughs> <laughs> um, what? He's got like a, a bottle of Imperial leather over there. That's quite good. And his room is exactly what I wanted it to be. No, yeah, Peter this Basley. is like, what it's not disappointed at all. If Peter Basley talks about the studio, then it's not a studio; it's his bedroom. But it's a mattress with a leopard print and lion print uh, blanket stood he, up against the wall. I but, quite like. But he's got like three mattresses, and one of them's like a. So he's got one, and then he's got one on top of it, like a step, and then one against the wall. Hang on. I'm being an idiot. So this... These are different mattresses, yeah, on top of each other. Oh, uh, I thought it was like for, like almost like a bunk bed type yeah, of thing. Yeah, same, same, but... No, but it's, it's not, it's just two mattresses on top of each other. Stacked mattresses, yeah, with half of it against the wall. Like, wh- yeah, yeah, why... Wait, yeah. that mattress has a fold in it. Oh, that's two mattresses. Let me feel it. So It's two mattresses. Okay. Wait, no, hang on. No, yeah, it's two mattresses. Um... Stay you are, guys. There you go. Uh, <laughs> pick in your mind's eye. You've how fucking how long has it taken him to do a wee? He's, he's got to be shitting. Or he's, he's just stood outside the door. He's having a cigarette. Which I wouldn't put past him either. He's gone to... Yeah, no, I wouldn't. I bet, yeah. He's uh, gone to a different podcast. Mate, are you doing Edinburgh this year? I am doing Edinburgh this year. What are you... Uh, what are you what? Oh, I'm you're doing, doing a, Half an hour. Well, you're doing with somebody else, are you? On my own. Where is it? Uh, 5.30 at the Counting House every day, 3rd to the 28th, not the 15th, if you're up there. Nice. Why not the 15th? Nice plug. It's my day off. It's okay. day off on the 15th. It's, sorry, there's just another... Baisley has a, an, like an A3, or that that would actually no, be A2 or that, A1. Yeah, that, I think that might be an A1. That, an A1. a huge bit of paper. Bit of paper, sellotaped to his wall. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's mostly empty, except for a tiny, tiny bit of biro that says things to do and then the number one underneath that is podcast <laughs> so, <laughs> so he's doing all right so far <laughs> that's brilliant oh wow hey you listen, hey, listen, 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 listen. see boys talk about their love life their, their dreams and hopes we teach them love, who important things <laughs> animal killers <laughs> you to hear this listener the, the microphone is balanced on top of one of those... It's a drum. Yeah, it's one of the drum boxes that people busk with. There's a little burp there. Don't know if you heard that. Where the fuck is this guy? <laughs> this has now become... It's just become... Uh, a, a, we're carrying this, if I'm honest with you. Well, we definitely are now, because we're I mean, the yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Air Night Show. Is this, do you think this is like what he... What he does, yeah. this is the format of the podcast, yeah. is that he just leaves the room and leaves us to chat. Yeah, absolutely think that's right. what he does. And that whole, uh, it wasn't recording, was deliberate to try and, what? Oh no, because they saw how annoyed he was oh, when really? he realised, yeah. Okay. So there was a moment of like anger and then it went away again, it was All fine. Right. Which was funny, flash. funny to me. I'm not thinking that he's like a, like a movie sociopath. Trying to play us. Maybe. Play the, us first <laughs> the first time I met him, I was like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> he was heckling guys at the game. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he basically heckles other comedians. He is a comedian. Yeah. yeah. But he does, like, the ones that he heckles deserve it. I was still too nice at that stage. I think I was too young where I was like, this guy's being a fucking knob. Mm. And then 
the more I realize, the more like, oh no, the guys that he's doing this to, they, they are they are deserved of it. Peter Basley's laugh is like the, you know, the black spot in Treasure Island. <laughs> so if, if you hear Peter Basley laughing at one of your jokes, he only laughs when you're doing really badly. And yeah. doing something terrible. <laughs> Whenever I'm on stage and I hear his laugh, I immediately go, never doing that joke again. That was terrible. <laughs> Fucking... To get the first time I ever gigged with him was like in an empty, like uh, it was like a sort of quite it was like a basement bar, but it had pictures of strippers all over the wall. What the fuck? And Where it, was that? It was uh, in like East London, and there was only other comics in the audience. Here he comes. Basically, was on first, and he was the only person. I was still really new at this stage, and he was the only person laughing at my set. And I was like, <laughs> at the time, I was like, brilliant, he likes it. I got, <laughs> I got now, one. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> the gift of hindsight. Yeah. We were just talking about it the first time we met you. Oh, it's all good. good. Yeah. How was your Sounds toilet? Sounds good. Uh, yeah, all right. I ended up having a, a half a shower and uh, clean my teeth. What do you mean, half a shower? Pretty good. Well, we're running low on toilet paper. Just so, leave that there. Oh, right, just leaving okay, it there. Yeah. Just leaving it there. Yeah. I get it, yeah. Wait, no, don't running let me interrupt you. Su- sorry, running low would suggest that you still have toilet paper, though. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't want to use it all up for my guests. No, but I mean that's what you in the use studio paper for. We've not got much left, mate. Who do? You, how many people do you live with, Pete? Two. Did they buy the toilet roll? Just text one of them to bring something. Last some time, in. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, is it like a, if you finish it, you buy the like next I've one sort of deal? That's the kind of minefield how shares are. Mm. Anyway, what? Don't let me interrupt. That sounded very funny. You're talking about me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go on. I think hey, we're, I think done. we're yeah. done. Yeah, okay. no, you yeah. came oh, at the right time. We just back we, to it later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do that. So, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to um, what was the podcast called? The Ed Night Show. The Ed Night Show. Yeah. <laughs> Is it now? Yeah. Welcome to the Ed Night Show <laughs> with your guest tonight, John Mirher. <laughs> We were talking about yeah. names, podcast names. Yeah, talking about podcast names. Cool. I think just like the, like you said, the Peter Basley show or something. Right, he's too, he's too mad. I like that 10% of nothing, though. 10% of nothing would be quite good. Oh, what's that? How it did you a, come up with that? It was a good bit. We were having a nice bit of back and forth banter, and it sort of sprung from that. Okay, yeah, I like that. What is it? 10% of nothing. So it's like your agent can never get 10% because we don't get paid. Yeah. Nice. Um... Can you both say that and we'll use it in like a little sting? 10% of nothing. Wait, sorry, what? Okay, 10% of nothing. Very good. Um, that sounded really weird. You're right. listening to the 10% of nothing podcast. Cast, cast. And then we'll cut your bits in. It'll be brilliant. All right. Um, another name, I just came up with a name when right. I got out of the shower. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I came up with the... Cause, because I constantly interrupt the podcast to say, you're listening to. Yeah. How about the you're listening to podcast? Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Maybe. It's like in Peep Show where Jess calls his band various artists. Yeah. <laughs> That's good, isn't it? I, like, yeah. I actually, I like that name. Yeah. You're listening to podcast. I like that. The you're listening to podcast. But you're listening to the you're listening to podcast. You're listening to the, sorry, I'll do that again. You're listening to the you're listening to the podcast. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, I you're like listening that. to the. You're listening to podcast. That's weird, isn't it? I like that. That's good. All Thank right, you. cool. Yeah, it's gonna be weird. Yeah. But your one was pretty good as well. Ten percent of nothing podcast. That sounds. Yeah. I can imagine listening to that, or at least searching for it on iTunes. Yeah. No, but I. You'd it'd be really tricky because would you type the percent symbol, or would you uh, type percent, or would you type per space cent? I think you can do it either because there's that podcast ninety nine percent invisible. Oh uh, yeah. God, we're so fucking boring. Yeah. Drive the train, Pete. Drive yeah, the train. Fucking, it's your, it's your vehicle, well, man. you can only drive a train in one direction, guys. And you are the carriages. So, let's get this what? train off the platform or, or off out of the, the station. station. Let, you're listening to Out of the Station. Here. <laughs> Did you see it? <laughs> oh, my fucking wow. Hey, you're listening to the hate star. You're listening to... Yeah. You're listening to To young boys talk about their love life Their their dreams and hopes And love who they want to get married with We teach them important things 10% of nothing 10% of nothing You're listening to the 10% of nothing podcast 
And we'll kill it. We'll kill it. So, you guys, um, what's something? Um, what's your favourite type of pa- pan? <coughs> guys, what's your favourite type of pan? A quill. A quill. A quill. Yeah, imagine being able to use a quill. <laughs> Fucking nightmare, man. I'm allergic to feathers. Fuck! I can't do feather pillow. Not all feather. Not all feathers, feather, sure. <laughs> no, but like, not. I don't know if it's like every single one, but I've like, slept on feather pillows <laughs> recently and my face is all swollen up. Well, maybe if we got you a different type of feather. <laughs> yeah, like a fake, fake feather. You would have been useless back in the day. I know. Oh, he's a young guy. He seems quite funny, but he can't write any of his, any of his stuff down. Why he's not? Got, he he's allergic. He hands every yeah, time he writes. fingers. I think um, I would just like... You'd have been illiterate, mate. Illiterate? Illiterate. Illiterate. I suppose you would well, have I mean, used like a just... chalkboard... Allergic to the pen isn't the same as don't know how to write. Allergic to the pen is a great name. Allergic to the pen would be a wicked name. You're listening to Allergic to the Pen. Very good. I, my oh. favourite type of pen uh, is probably... Um, I quite like those those ones that you click down that's got four colours. Nice. I like those. I actually have a favourite pen. I've just remembered. Oh, really? What so is it? I went, whenever I was at school, I went to Lourdes. Like, if you don't know Lourdes, Lourdes is a yeah. religious place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. where Before fucking a healed. miracle happened. For absolutely definitely happened. <laughs> and um, I was there as a... That's a knock as well. I was there. No, I've not been to knock. No, I don't know. But I uh, drove through a few times. But oh. when you've been to Lourdes, you've seen the big you've, you've, you've seen Lourdes, you've seen all. Yeah, but um, <laughs> they, I was there... Um, like we were there caring for people or whatever mm. and I got a pen and it was one of those pens like you know you, the ones where you see a woman's clothes will come off if you turn it upside down yeah. and then it falls down except that it was Bernadette who's the girl who saw uh, the vision of Mary yeah. and she was kneeling down and Mary came out of the clouds amazing <laughs> and, I, That's and amazing. it was it was, uh, it was gold coloured plastic <laughs> <laughs> I did my A level exams with that pen <laughs> <laughs> just for a bit of fucking help it's like, it's, it's like in uh, Father Ted now gets the tape dispenser yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so tacky the I stuff that you can that. buy it's so good you can buy the Pope's favourite biscuits in Rome that what? was one of the best things I've seen in the Vatican City what's his favourite biscuits no it's they're just a, it's a packet oh, right. so this was before this was when it would have been actually the, just before John Paul died but it was just a packet of biscuits and it had his face on it and it was just the Pope's favourite wow. biscuits. <laughs> what What do you reckon is Pope Francis's favourite biscuit? Um, I reckon it's... Just like a, I think it's quite plain. Like it's something digestive. that looks nice but is deeply poisonous. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I know, but they all did. They all did fuck kids. <laughs> I reckon... I reckon... <laughs> I reckon Benedict went for proper posh, like, weight rolls. Ginger snap, covered in, like... Yeah. Goals. Yeah. Diamante shortbreads. That he had stolen from a Jewish family (laughs) way back because he was a Nazi. He was. He was in the Hitler Youth, wasn't he? (laughs) Yeah, he was, yeah. Yeah. Hilariously, and the the argument, people are like, yeah, but back then, like, you know, he didn't really have a choice. Uh, His brother was in the resistance. So, yeah, so whoa. you did have a choice. Yeah. Um, and he wrote the book on how to cover up child abuse. Did well. he? Like what? the actual book? Yeah, no, it's like the book. yeah, yeah. For the so for the like bishops and stuff, this the guidelines on what to do. Yeah. If this happens, like Ratzinger was the guy who wrote that book. That's like one of the, like, that's why he stood down. And pretend you're not him. That's basically yeah. Here, just fucking put them on sick leave. That's what it was. That's what yeah. they did. They put them on sick leave. This has took a weird turn, has it? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> You're listening to the Pedophile Ring podcast. Cut that out. Well, no, it's anti pedo, isn't it? Well, no, just talk, we're talking about. Although we are kind of the telling Church. them how to get away with it. Yeah. So no, but they didn't. So it's good. What you want to do? They did. They got away. Wait. The, the, what? Yeah, yeah. There were pedophiles in the Catholic Church. <laughs> what? <laughs> early, earlier, on, earlier on, Pete basically asked us to explain. Well, John mostly to explain everything that had happened. With Northern Ireland. We teach them important things. They listen to the hate cast. The young boys talk about their love life, their, their dreams and hopes, and love who they want to get married with. 10% of nothing. Allergic to the Ben. That's What's your favourite Ben and Jerry's flavour? Well, I, I, got, I tasted a new one recently. I've got a new one, guys. Um, yeah. It's like Oreo cookie and cookie dough. 
Oh, yeah. wow. I've, I've got some in my, my freezer favorite. right now. Oh. Uh, the cookie dough is probably my favorite. Well, I thought it couldn't be topped, and then they've fucking only gone put Oreo wow. cookie in it. It's called Swirl Up, is that right? Something like that, Something yeah. Like great. Cookie dough some Swirl Up. offer in Tesco's. Wow. Um, there you go. I wasn't, that, I wasn't that bothered with it. Well, but really? I think I had it at the wrong temperature. But that's what taste is. What's the ideal like? temperature for Hagen Dazs ice cream? Cold. It's not about temperature, texture. Yeah, that's a good point. Do you ever? It's not right temperature. You got to take it out of the freezer and leave it there. Yeah, right. or pop it in the microwave. This for a is few what seconds, I'm interested in. Yes. Scoopable. What? How many seconds? In the microwave, I said about ten seconds. Are you putting the whole? Are you putting the, the whole, whole tub, tub in, in the, the microwave, microwave? About ten seconds straight out of the freezer, or leave it on the side for ten minutes. Yeah, preferably leave it on the side for ten minutes. And do you eat the whole tub at once? Uh, it depends. Well, yeah, I really have ice cream. Fucking man. So yeah. Lads, 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 lads. I do eat it. I do eat it, but I eat it with a like a massive spoon. Yeah. So it feels like less. Okay. Like you can get the whole tub on one spoon. Oh, nice. Mm. It's huge. Huge. Mm. I like that. I like eating a full tub of ice cream, and then I fucking hate myself. Big spoons, Ed. Big spoons, Ed, night. Ed, night. Yeah, I don't know anything about your history, guys. Um, I mean, I had I had an Australian on. Uh, which one? The podcast already. Tackle. So I've learned a little bit. Was it tackle? No, or? Wayne oh. Carter. Oh, yeah. Um, so I've learned a bit about um, Australia. Tell me more about Ireland. What? And the Troubles. Uh, <laughs> 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 You're listening to uh, oh. International... Have you ever heard of Shank Hill? Shag Hill. Sh- not Shag Hill, Shank Hill. No. Guys, you're not actually talking. <laughs> I'm not actually on doing this. Like, I'll just be walking away fucking angry and sad. <laughs> you're, yeah. listening. you're listening to GCSE history. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, they don't teach Top you up. anything about this. Yeah, they don't teach that. They yeah. don't teach you this. Well, no, I've never heard anything about it. Yeah. I, I thought you guys were all okay over there. <laughs> just a few murals. Murals? Murals. Murals no. up on the walls. No. Oh, get her down. <laughs> oh, banter. We do have Muriels fun. Murals up on the wall. It's the troubles in Belfast. She's up on the wall again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mural. Mural kept getting up on the wall and everyone was trying to get her down. <laughs> oh, we have... I have misunderstood that in a hilarious way um, because I am a comedian. Guys, listening, you are to podcast. Mm. <laughs> how are you going to spell that for the search? Podcast. Mm. Oh, I reckon it's three M's. I got, uh, I got drunk the other night and started a Twitter account for my baking stuff. Uh, but because yeah. I was drunk... For his baking stuff. I, I bake a lot. And yeah. the, the password I know is meringues. But because I was drunk, I've got no fucking idea. <laughs> <laughs> so... There you go. Great how can we kids. how can we find out more about your baking stuff? What what is the address of the Twitter handle? Uh, well, the address is at John Bakes, but it doesn't matter because I can't access it. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I'm sure we'll access. Yeah, it Yeah, you can you can point. retrieve your password. Love baking. Just uh, what's your favorite thing to bake? Mate, at the minute, it's brownies. But I made meringues last night for the first time properly. I've yeah. failed before. But I made brownies this week that were fucking unreal. Awesome. And yeah. then we're now going to have a live t- tasting on air? No. You didn't bring any. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't Yeesh. bring any. Um, speaking of Tinder, we had a live Tinder session on the on the Wayne Carter podcast. Oh, should we do oh, it yeah. again? Should we do my Tinder? We can Tinder? do that if you want. Do right. your Tinder, yeah. Let me get my Tinder out. Tinder's fucking great. People give it shit. It's like, I love Tinder. So, at the minute... Tinder, the dating app. Probably uh, key you in. At the minute, my... Um, just for the listeners, my profile picture on Tinder is a picture of a golden retriever, and my my, strong. my bio is woof woof. Oh, strong, you son of a bitch. So, <laughs> let's you... have a look. Uh, I've had two matches. Um, one of them has never applied to me. Uh, Standard, don't worry this, about this that. Is why a, lot of people, a lot of people are lurkers. <laughs> no, but I, I super liked her. And, um, Ooh. and then she came back, though. And then then. She, she, yeah, after that, she liked me. And then... Uh, Another comedian, lovely, very good comedian called Bob Monroe, took my phone oh. and sent her a message that says, you're on death row, you've got one last meal, what's it going to be? P.S. You're on death row for stealing my heart. <laughs> uh, and then... Fucking Bob. And then I wrote, and A.B.H. And she's <laughs> <a good life>. <laughs> <laughs> So um, we're wrapping up now, guys. It's been really great. Um, yeah. We've actually ended up recording... F- f- uh, 
uh, about two and a half hours. Wow. So this 15-minute podcast yeah. is going to be good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's been, yeah, it's been all right. Only 15 minutes. He's, no, say, he's saying when we when I edit right. it down, it'll yeah. be it'll Making be about joke. fifteen try minutes. Or, oh, try, cheers, try, man, try, try one of your jokes. Out. <laughs> trying to trying to host, see how this joke so thing works. <laughs> anything you guys want to leave the listener with? Something nice. Anything no, to say to the people? No, what what people? Hi, Pete's mum. People, yeah, listening. hi, Pete's mum. You've raised a really nice son. Congratulations, Aww. I like him. Oh, that's good. That's it. Take a chance. That's it. Always. That's my advice to everyone. Yeah. Still talking Take to my mum. Do it. Do it. Live in the day, in the moment. Uh, the night. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah fucking night. what a way to end the podcast. That's good. Okay. Right, well, no. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, let's, Cheers, let's we'll leave it there the, yeah. on, the, on the awkward side. Let's Thanks, go. guys. I was about to go to the toilet, but then these two guys hypnotized my eyes. Hypnotize my eyes with a banta 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 banta. Here we go. Hit a banta.